I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Hi, welcome to Hard Knock Life. I'm Dominic Ma. I'm Brittany Monet. And we're going to talk about a bunch of things today. So without even any ramp up, what's the first thing you'd like to talk about, Brittany? I kind of want to talk about the Eternals trailer real quick. Just, I don't know how long you want to spend on it, but I thought it looked really good. And as we knew, Marvel did finally put in the, what do you call it, title card, whatever of it saying, you know, Chloe Zhao. Academy Award winning director. Yeah, yeah. So they are claiming that this is her full vision. I hope it is. But it looks really good. I'm just really excited. I think, I don't know, there's some people are complaining about the color grade already. I'm just like, oh, but I don't know. It just looks great. I'm very excited. And you know me, I just love Richard Madden. So I'm just very excited for this movie. I don't know where Richard Madden is from. What, what Game is... of Thrones? He was Rob Stark. Okay, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm one of those guys who has not watched Game of Thrones okay. at all. So, yeah. <laughs> I just know it was a huge thing that <laughs> gave all these people like their next acting job in Marvel movies. <laughs> That's how I know Game of Thrones. That's funny. Um, no, so for me, like it's really kind of... Dip- so everyone who knows what happens to Rob Stark is like going to laugh at this story. So I watched the first season because I love Sean Bean. And I was like, oh, he's the main character. He's not going to die. I'm so excited. Uh-huh. And as you know, <laughs> everyone knows, every, anything that Sean Bean is in, he's going to die. Oh, and yeah, what's, yeah. what's really horrible is because he really is the main character of like the first season and as well as the first book. And so watching the first season, I was like, ooh, I like this Rob guy. Who Rob is? Sean Bean's character's son, Ned Stark. And I was like, ooh, I really love Rob Stark. And so I was like, I think I'm going to read the books because I want to know what's going to happen to Rob. Mm. Make sure he lives through the series. So everyone now was like, ha, ha, ha. Joke's on Britney. She didn't know. So I read the books. I read the second book. I'm like, ooh, okay. Rob Stark is doing his thing, battling, beating Jamie Lannister. This is great. Get to book three. And they kill him. (laughs) This horrible death. So that's, it's really funny, but I just, I still was like, no, they can, they should bring him back. <laughs> and I kind of checked out of like the fifth book because I'm like, Rob Stark isn't here anymore. So that's my Richard Madden okay. story. That's the foundation <laughs> of the Richard Madden love. I mean, I understood that yes. that happened and it was a big deal and uh, a, sh- a shocking death. Yes. But for people who haven't read the books, I want them to know that in the books, it's sad. Rob Stark is only like actually 14 in the books. Ooh. He's yeah. So all the not kids a grown ass man as Richard Madden is. Yes. Okay. So that's kind of like mm, you know, but like it makes his death much worse in the books because you're like they did this to a 14 year old child, like. Yeah, that sucks. That's extra harsh. <laughs> and the thing is, in the books, his wife is not present. She did not die. So the show added her like being stabbed in her pregnant belly. Like that does not happen in the book. Oh, just so yeah. people know, that's not in the books. Like. Don't know. <laughs> That's a mean one. But yeah, most of the kids on the sh- on the show are aged up because in the books they're all like between the ages of like I want to say so the youngest kid is um what was the youngest boy's name I can't remember his name the youngest dark boy is like only like three or four when the books first start off and then the oldest who is Rob is like fourteen gonna be fifteen so all the kids uh, the the Stark kids are in between that age range so and then you have Danny, who, you know, Daenerys, she's only like 13 (laughs) in the first book. So it's very, like, questionable what they did with the books. But that being said. It it goes against, you know, child labor laws if you're making it into a movie at some point. Oh, yeah. Can't have all 15-year-olds. But a lot of things that happen, too, are just you can't have, you know, underage kids acting out sex scenes. Yeah. That's why a lot of the stuff featuring teenagers where they are having sex and they're supposed to be underage are usually played by you know actors who are 18 or up before those reasons like it's considered you know yeah that's why they do that rightly so yes and by contrast the eternals are all like five thousand years old old. yeah so 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 we're okay they can do anything (laughs) it's open season um even though they all look like they're you know 20 or 30 
And so, like, I, it was funny, that, like, they addressed that, uh, what were they doing during uh, Thanos thing pretty quick. Like, it seemed really concerned that they, you know, they heard the fandom and they wanted people that their whole uh, Infinity War shit thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure it's going to make any sense, but they were at least addressing the issue. And that's fine with me. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I mean, but now they're going to have to do that. They're either, they were snapped or they weren't, they didn't get their powers yet or. Yeah. Or maybe they were napping. I, maybe they were binging like Ted Lasso or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm just saying. I don't. I don't need a strong story reason. I don't. I, I'm not that picky about my Marvel universe making sense in that way. No, same. I mean, I understand people's worry about it, but yeah. But I don't know. It looks great. I'm really excited. I like the whole scene with Brian Trey Henry's character towards the end of the trailer. It was like, oh yeah, this is like made out of uh, vibranium and stuff and they smack the table yeah. and it breaks it in half. And he's like, it's actually Ikea's fall collection or <laughs> yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, I no. love that moment. That was good. That was choice. Yeah. That guy, that guy's a great actor. He I, is. I really appreciate that guy. I really hope this like launches him into more things because he's really good he's one of my favorite parts of if you ever seen the show atlanta he's like one of the best oh, yeah. parts of the show so oh yeah he's yeah. great in atlanta tortured paper boy mm-hmm. so like i still don't really know who all the eternals are like um stuff but yeah i'm still kind of in the same spot where i was where because I, I i bought the physical copy of the book but i just since i bought the physical copy i haven't gone back to actually reading the uh neil gaiman run of eternals mm-hmm. i said i was reading on the marvel unlimited app I read like the I read the first issue and then I started the second one so I'm somewhere in the middle of the second yeah issue I just haven't like picked it up again because I'm reading 20 million other things right. and I get sidetracked and start reading and other 19 million, million of them are and... Fear Street books I understand <laughs> yes <laughs> and I just ordered the ones that were sitting in my Amazon cart the other night so those are like five or six oh, books oh bless arriving. you that's excellent so yeah so. <laughs> Looks really exciting. Surprised to see the Eternals mm-hmm. trailer. And I mean, like, it deserves mention again that it's a pointedly diverse cast. You know, I know enough about the Eternals to know that iconically they're all white, like most, you know, superheroes were when they were created back in the day. This yes. cast goes out of its way to have Selma Hayek and Don Lee and the names of the other actors are escaping me. But, you know, they look like the world, you know. Mm-hmm. They're, they're supposed to be this world guardian yes. force, kind of, and it looks nice like they have a good amount of black and brown people. Yes, I love that. And I love Angel. I'm sorry, I love Angelina Jolie, so <laughs> I'm really excited that she... One shot in the trailer is really cool where she's holding the shield gold spear thing. Like, yeah. I don't know, that's such a cool shot of her. And then someone had pointed out how her and Hela are, like, the oh, yeah, opposites yeah, yeah. of each other. Like the, 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 like one's like the dark goth one and the other one's like the, you know, ethereal goddess of light one. And I'm like, I love that. Now I kind of want them to do like a weird buddy style thing of, of Thena and, uh, Hella. That's cool. Out. I don't know. Yeah. I need that. That would be a great crossover. Right. Yeah. Angelina and, uh, Hella. It was her name Athena? I mean, I'm not remembering, but. It's Athena or Athena. Like, yeah. 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 That sounds right. But, you know, I mean, every time I speak great comic book ideas on here, they kind of start to happen in some way because Black Canary, I talked about that. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about it. What happened? For those who haven't heard the news, uh, Misha Green, who worked on the show Underground and Lovecraft Country, is going to be developing a movie for Black Canary featuring Journey Smollett, obviously, and it's going to be for HBO Max. And I think that's going to be really really cool and now i'm like already like thinking of all the other things i want to see happen with this i'm like ooh, Mm -hmm. i want to see journey's black canary meet up with leslie uh i can't forget i forgot her last name leslie grace right yes who just got cast as back yeah like their characters joining up and meeting up and i'm like but i also kind of want to see like you know, I'm like head canning all this stuff. Like, uh-huh. I do also kind of want to see Polka Dot Man somehow. <laughs> in there, I really like the new Polka Dot Man. And even though he like, died, I'm just like, I need all of this. So DC gods, yeah, bless me again. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, that was great news. And yeah, we had talked about it, you know, proposing it like a, a wish list before. And then they uh-huh. said, uh, you know, they said they're actually starting to work on it. And we should mention all these movies are way down the road. They, 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 they yeah. do this thing of announcing they're them in development. to tease us. Definitely, that's part yes. of it. They love uh, announcing what's in development, and then some things don't leave developmental stages, yep. so that's like the thing. 
some people don't realize how many movies get pitched and the pitches get accepted and then like they kind of get the ball rolling and then some stuff never yeah move it and then they do get filmed but then they don't get like released so that happens a lot there's a lot of movies that get made don't, that don't get released and yeah it's, yeah it's crazy if you actually learn the breakdown of how many things yeah. don't actually happen yeah they consider in the effort, industry. I mean, just ask tim burton superman which was supposedly a, a movie <laughs> at one point but never got shot but i mean but it's it's cool because like at this point like fandom and the mm -hmm. cinematic universes are so like synergistically connected like they know they can't just announce these things they can't just announce these things and then like drop actually i mean they have dropped a few things marvel like but i remember when marvel is gonna have a tiger and dazzler series and i thought that was a hot idea and i think it just got shelved indefinitely it got shelved so they did the same with the ghost rider show yeah. that they were going to do with gabriel luna which i i'm it makes me so frustrated because he was really one of the best parts of like agents of shield oh, when right. he was on there and I was like, I could totally see them doing like a movie. I I had pitched it a long time ago. Actually, I wrote it on uh, actually on There's a Color about what well, like mm -hmm. we should have a R rated uh Ghost Rider movie, and it should be him, and it should be directed by Anton Fuqua because like I feel like the training training day yeah. type of like yeah. film fits really well for his Ghost Rider. Yeah. And I'm like, that would be really cool to have that aesthetic with like his Ghost Rider. Yeah. And I wrote the article kind of about it and. I'm just like, why, why Marvel? That, <sighs> that guy's good. Wait, wait, did Anton Fuqua express interest in that, or are you just wish listing? I it wrote it. Okay. I wrote the article, and then um, actually, the guy who I, I feel so bad for forgetting his name, the guy who created uh, Robbie Reyes in the comics, actually saw like the article. Oh. Was like, oh, this is dope, and like retweeted it, and then because of that, Gabriel Luna saw it, and he was like, yeah, I'm down to do this, and so I'm just like, yeah, make it happen. Yeah, it was a long time funny. ago that I I made that article. Oh, but... uh, yeah, that's a good, that that sounds solid to me. Yeah, I guess yeah. I bet Ghostwriter has some legal issue or something that they're working out. I want, or maybe Probably. or maybe they're, there's like a, like that they have to let a certain amount of time settle after the Nicolas Cage movies. I just, I, I don't know. Ghost Rider is obviously a super popular character. Well, their, their Ghost Riders are two different versions. One is, so Johnny Blaze is the one that you all saw with Nicolas yeah. Cage. And then if you did not watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider, who was the one on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and that's the one that Gabriel Luna played, and he was really great. And I really just think that it would make a really great, like, training day style type of movie but totally. obviously set in like the world of what ghost rider in embodies and i think it'd be really cool and i feel like they are gonna build up towards midnight suns type of stuff just because of like blade is gonna happen mm. and we you know moon knight is happening so oh that's a good point yeah they're kind of they're sort of darker scarier characters just all yeah converge. oh that yeah that's excellent that's good thinking wait but circling back to to, sorry totally went off on a marvel tangent yeah, that's that's why we're here <laughs> to to will it into being the but circling back to the birds of prey black canary thing for a moment i mean for a thing that seems like a pretty good match i mean misha green and journey spell who already played her in that one movie in oh birds yeah of prey. they're it's they're they work well together yeah. it seems like a creative uh you know a creative team you could uh, get excited about and i think think it's worth mentioning that you know again these projects are just being announced and I, I'll, I'll back off what i said before because yes they do announce projects sometimes that just disappear completely but let's say uh -huh. they're going to commit to these projects projects dc has a kind of interesting slate of black and brown protagonists in these oh, major yeah. dc shows that have just been announced if we're going to include black canary if we're going to include batgirl and uh and also blue beetle blue beetle who is yeah. one of the prominent latino heroes in the dc universe and i really like i really like that uh, blue beetle character so i'm excited just because i have actually watched cobra kai and i genuinely love that show i know there's people who don't like it and think it's too cheesy mm -hmm. but it's really fun the kid who's being i can't i don't know how to pronounce his first name mm -hmm his actual like name but he's really really good on cobra kai he's like the heart of the show he's so great and to see him now like knowing that he's probably you know gonna do the superhero role and i'm just really excited for the kid and what will like come for him outside of yeah. superhero roles because he really is great on cobra kai and i would love to see him do other things that's not just like action 
yeah. stuff because when he has like emotional scenes, I think he's really he's really great. So um, I'm really looking forward to him being Blue Beetle, and he's actually like you know darker skin too. He's not like a white passing Latino, so there's yeah. actual like representation for brown skin Latino people and him being in that role. So I feel like it's gonna be really great. Cool moment. Yeah, and hopefully those the projects move along swiftly. Because they sound great. And yeah, and we're going to learn that actor's name when it gets closer, too. We're just going to learn how to say it, right? Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to attempt to say it, and then it's, like, right. entirely wrong. I know it begins, like, X. It's, yeah. His name is, like, X-I-O. Right. So it's... I know... And, and that's I know okay. I there's girls' names who are, like, Shoti or something, but I don't want to say I think it, I it's think it's, like, a, like, an S sound, but, but I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, like Shochi or something. But that's okay, cause there, cause, cause, cause the movie's far yeah. off. It's not like it's coming out tomorrow, so we have time to practice and and, and learn about these people and get it and get right. his name pronounced right. Yes. But speaking of things like that, <laughs> yes, I was yes. Going to say, speaking of things like Perfect that, segue. so so the move, so a movie that is coming out real soon is Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and this this was exactly a case of like. Me being a Chinese American person, you know, oh, eventually we'll do a Shang Chi movie, and then eventually we'll have a co- talk about how to say everybody's name. And it was always so far in the in the future distance that, like, you know, it's just oh, the, the, we'll 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 get around to that eventually. And now it's actually just two weeks away, so it's actually the appropriate time to be like hashing some of these things out. So you know, I, I wrote a piece about how to pronounce Shang Chi's name, which is. There are a lot of different sources around the internet have been talking about this subject. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is a lot of them are wrong, and okay. according and this is according to me. So I, you know, I'm Chinese American person, and I don't really speak Chinese. I I took it in school, so I have a you know a fundamental understanding of how to speak mm-hmm. the very bad Mandarin that I speak. Um, but it's still interesting that just circulating around. The internet where all these things like well you do you just say it like shanghai right and it's like yeah you do but you don't say shanghai like that it's shanghai and also again i should say none of this is like a really big deal it's not like it like it's a huge offense to the culture if you pronounce a word differently we pronounce lots of words weirdly in english that are mm-hmm. <laughs> spanish words and you know words borrowed from other countries uh, like uh, karaoke is a typical one that's said like you know karaoke but it's it's the English version we have is karaoke. It's not a huge offense to the culture that we have this thing, but it's worth talking about, you know, in terms of getting, you know, people to learn these little building blocks about East Asian cultures. And it's, and and also like along those lines, there's a whole thing with the actor's name itself. Um, I might as well (laughs) say this. I was talking with a friend of mine. So it is, we, we've been saying Simu Lu, which is fine. That's isn't it Simu Liu? It is kind of that. I and the U kind of converge into one syllable. That's actually a sort of tricky part of Chinese pronunciation. I'm not going to do it very well, but okay. I say, but I say Simu Lu. It, it, Simu Lu. Yeah, there's like a little I like right in the middle of there. If you have perfect pr- Chinese pronunciation, it's like Liu, okay. Liu. It's not a natural sound in English, so people are going to stumble over it. And this first name officially should be Sumu. Something, some like Sumo, but he did a funny TikTok video, I think it was, where he just went through the mm-hmm. whole thing of what of when he talks to people about how to pronounce his name, and they go back and mm-hmm. forth about Sumo or Simu, and he, he's just uh, adopted Simu basically because it it's easier. Okay. That was a long way of saying, you know, that's just an adaptation some people make um, if when they have uh, names that they're not people are not familiar with. I think it mm-hmm. happens a lot among Asian people. Like I have a Korean friend whose name is Pyong Sun. But people find that difficult, so she just goes by Sunny. You know, it's it's a sort of meet you halfway adaptation. So, you know, long story short, even though we've been saying Simu Lu's name technically wrong, we're also saying it right. So, chew on that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if we'll go. Well, see, I thought he had said that his name was Simu Liu, and he says it because it rhymes. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And uh, that's what I, I I thought he tweeted that. So I was like, oh, he did. He I tweeted missed. out a clarification tweet pronouncing all the things. But even when you read it, it doesn't. It's not like it. It, it doesn't like exactly convey how the Chinese pronunciation works. I mean, it has all the sounds, but. Oh God, I'm gonna get technical, and also I'm gonna say something not exactly right. So I don't know if we're editing all this together. But 
It's almost Lu, but there's a little I sound in the middle. And it becomes one syllable. It's like Liu. Leo? It's, if you said it really slow, it would be like Li U. Li who? Li U. But you say it, you don't say it that slow, so it becomes Liu. Liu. I think. But that's okay, because people can take their time to, you know, adjust these things, just like they took 20 years to figure out that it's Shanghai and not Shanghai. <laughs> and that's that's all fine. We're all learning together. Um, but anyway, so a bunch of Shang-Chi trailers, like TV spots, have dropped recently too, and we're just a couple weeks out from the opening of that movie. So Brittany, may I ask, do you, do you have a plan to see this movie? And... I I do. So the way my I have to look at like exactly what time I'm getting off because that actual Friday is the Friday I'm supposed to go to see the Hello Mega Tour, which is the show that's followed up by Great Oh yeah, Razor. right. So it's that actual like Friday night is that concert. I'm hoping I can do a midnight showing. It depends on exactly what time I get off. I have so either I'm seeing it with my friend Erica. Or I'm going with my friend Julie. I kind of told my friend Erica I'd see it with her first. But if she can't go, then I'm for sure seeing it with Juliet. Probably a midnight showing somewhere in the Arcadia air, okay. area. For those who you know are familiar with the San Gabriel Valley. Because I grew up in the San, San Gabriel Valley. And that's why yeah. I, if you saw me post it on Instagram and Twitter. That I donated $50 to POC Culture. Trying to fundraise for the Boys and Girls Club of uh, the San Gabriel Valley area for kids to be able to go see Shangji. So I've donated 50 because I grew up in that area and I know what it means to see someone like you on screen kicking butt. So that's why I was like, let me, oh. being a hero at that, you know, not just kicking butt and then being like yeah. one off, no bad guy, but like actually being like, you know, a hero and being important. So I donated $50 because I grew up in that community and um, there's such like, I, I know I go to a lot of like Asian food places out there so I just felt like I gotta give back because I go all the time and still hang out over in that area so that's why I did that yeah good for you well done yeah and like you know for those who don't know San Gabriel Valley a lot of Chinese people there a lot, lot of Asian stuff in general yeah a lot of Chinese yeah. people there a great center of Asian culture in Southern California mm -hmm. I lived there for a while as well and yeah so great that you mentioned that fundraiser yeah so they're doing some special events to try to get people to see Shang-Chi on this opening weekend, which is still a little bit difficult considering all our yeah, pandemic, pandemic concerns. Yeah, I I think, I feel like this is a movie I had to risk COVID for, not like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying go out and like kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm, I just feel like this movie is so important and I know that like they're just going to release this movie regardless and I just... I just know that the talk is going to be, oh, this movie bombed because of people aren't ready for an Asian uh, American superhero and not like we're in the middle of a pandemic because people still are talking about, you know, Suicide Squad not doing well. And it's like yeah. we're in the, a pandemic. People don't want to uh, die, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you know, speak. so right. it's like, I don't know. So. I will deal with not ha if I have to not have any snacks during the movie, which will suck. I would <laughs> rather do that right. and keep my mask on the whole time and watch the movie versus like, you know what? I just, I don't know. I feel like I have to go see this movie when it comes out, especially because he's is one of my favorite characters from the comics. Um, as we all know, Danny Rand is my favorite, but I'm never yeah. going to get justice for Danny Rand. Yeah. So I hope I get justice with, you know, Shang-Chi, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think all the new TV spots have been, like, amazing. I feel like they've upped yeah. the quality on everything on the last few trailers, too. And I'm just like, mm, this really is going to be what I think it's going to be. So I'm excited. Yeah, no, I think it all looks good. There's evidence that it's a very good movie. And, yeah, so I was struggling about with this thing a little bit, too. So I, I mm -hmm. decided to do the thing of rent a small theater, which... Uh, at AMC, you know, a big AMC multiplex. Apparently you can do that mm -hmm. at, these, at some AMCs. They keep the small theater, which seats like 20 people, and you can just rent it for not like a huge amount of money. Um, and mm -hmm. you can get a group of like 20 people together. So I figure I did, I totally want to support the movie for the culture mm -hmm. because I'm personally interested in it. But I was just iffy about going to the real theater. So, But it looks like there's this good compromise, which is, means I can go with you know, 10 to 20 people who, you know, I know, and we can talk about, uh, talk out reasonably how we're going to do it. 
and um, and go see it on opening weekend. So I'm kind of excited about that. It'll be my first time in a movie theater of any kind back since Birds of Prey mm-hmm. almost two years ago now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited about that and i think it's you know it's just like you said like the tv spots like you know they're showing some of the humor there's kind of there's a lightheartedness but there's also like mm-hmm. like they did one with like the more dramatic avengers kind of music that like yeah. locates it within the whole mcu like continuity and i was like oh yeah i'm really starting to feel this yeah and i don't know if you, everyone saw from the premiere Bing kingsley is there oh, yeah. is there and he's <laughs> actually going to be in the movie so i'm very curious awesome. to how they're going to address that. I've seen a lot of like people who actually have seen the movie so far. They've been saying really great things about the movie. So especially Laura, who, you know, yeah. writes for he Nerds of Color and everything. Her reactions to me are kind of like the ones that I always like to really like just... I know you need to form your own opinions about uh-huh. things, but when she likes something, I know that I'm, nor- I'm most likely going to like it because we and her have a lot of similar like taste and feelings about things so i'm just like okay she's loving this movie so i think i'm gonna like really like this movie so yeah i'm 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 with you as comforted by that i mean i think laura has a good take on things Mm -hmm. so you know and you know she's among the crowd of asian american you know media devouring people who would like you know like me who would have a lot of opinions and a lot of concerns about how they would do it so yeah without spoiling anything we can say that a bunch of people have liked it who saw it already and they were skeptical critical types some of them but they liked it yes anyway. uh-huh yeah and i know everyone's saying that tony is just that he's amazing oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm, so i'm really yeah. looking forward to his performance because just from the trailers i'm like oh he's gonna be so good but like hearing everyone's reactions like or reading everyone's reactions i should say i'm just like oh this is gonna be really 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 something i can't wait yeah that'll be a thing yeah and see all right so just to recap that mandarin thing for people who may have forgotten about it so like Mm-hmm. Ben Kingsley played a character who was called the Mandarin, sort of in Iron Man. Was it three? Three. Okay. Yes. And it was a little bit confusing at the time because it was it was much totally dodging whatever the comics Mandarin was, you know. Ah, uh, yes. And and then it was weird because it turned out it wasn't really him, and it was really freaking the guy Pierce aim character. And basically, yeah. they went way out of their way to dodge the whole issue of the Mandarin character as he is in the comic books, who is. A Chinese dude who is really good at martial arts and has 10 super powerful rings. They just weren't ready, basically. We can say that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember that they it came back as kind of the same reason why they unfortunately messed up on the ancient one was they were trying to avoid doing like a racial stereotype and be called racist for, you know, leaning into a stereotype. So they're like, let's just change it and make it like this. And then it kind of backfires, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, I really liked... What makes me mad about it is Ben Kingsley was really great when he was supposed to be, like, when he thought right, right. he was, like, evil. Right. And, like, the bad guy was like, okay, I'm really feeling this, like, this vibe of, like, what he was given. And then all of a sudden, you know, it turns out to be, like, a a joke. And, right. Uh, and I was just like... Ugh. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it, it was it, that was weird. But Ben Kingsley was very good, as he always uh, always is. And and I mean, honestly, that that's a good that's a good Marvel movie. I mean, I was I was into that Iron Man movie. I do for the most part. Yes, I like that movie. But I think it just ruins it just a little bit because I'm like, you know, they could have kept Ben Kingsley as being like, just, you, they could find. I feel like they could have found a way for him to not really been the real Mandarin, but claiming to be the Mandarin. Yeah. You know, without it having to be like, oh, he's just some, like, drunk, terrible actor who, like, you know. Right. right. Just, <laughs> that was, that was a little extreme when he turned out to be yeah. just, like. Yeah. I, I think they could have done something else to still have made him still a little bit more menacing. But I, the thing is also, like, Guy Pearce, and he always does play really good villain. Like, he's really good in the uh, Count of Monte Cristo, oh, if you guys have seen right. that with Jim Caviezel. Yeah, yeah. And young baby Henry Cavill. Oh, okay, okay. Well, like, he's not an actual baby, but he's, like, 18, <laughs> 19, so he just looks, like, he's, very young. He's a, he's a little cute thing. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, so, like, uh, yeah, I'm curious, having said all that, so it'll be interesting if they actually say the words, the Mandarin on screen. I don't know if they will. It's not really matters. I mean, again, one of these things that is interesting is that these are all, ki- these are all kind of overused Asian stereotypes in movies, 
you know, they've been they've been rightfully criticized for these things. You know, he's just kind of a martial artist in the Bruce Lee vein, and the Mandarin is is a villain who's sort of like a you know Chinese overlord mystical guy that we've seen in a bunch of movies. But that's all fine if you do it in a cool way. It might it might be over the top to actually call him the Mandarin because that's it's sort of a loaded term. Mm-hmm. Point is that Tony Leung will be the villain figure the somehow actual... in the movie. Yes, the guy who's actually in charge of yeah. the Ten Rings, and much and much closer to the original comics iteration, for mm-hmm. you know, for what that's worth to people. In fact, like the Mandarin in the comics is like so overpowered, he usually fights Iron Man. I don't know people that it's always it's it's a big deal that he fights Shang Chi, because these Ten Rings really like make you unstoppable at some point in the comics. So I'm really curious how that goes. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm really excited for that. And we know, like, uh, also Benedict Wong is going to be yeah. <laughs> back as, yes, playing Wong. The Wong role. I don't know how much he's going to, like, actually be in the movie, but I'm glad that he was like, I want to be a part of this. And he got to actually be a part of it. That's, that's really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I was surprised they didn't do, like, because I always like to watch the Marvel premiere live streams and I was able to, like, watch this one. This is the first one I've watched since. I want to say, I didn't, I missed the one for Captain Marvel, so I think the last one I watched was Black Panther. Huh. So it was fun to like kind of watch it again, but it wasn't the same just because there wasn't as many like, you know, because usually there's a whole bunch of people from like the Marvel movies that show up and they usually do a cast presentation inside of the theater and they bring out like everyone that they want to reveal at that time who's in the movie. So sometimes there's like one or two people you didn't know about. So the only one that I didn't know that was going to be in the movie was Ben Kingsley. So I was like, oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was the only person I didn't know. I, I figured Benedict was in it just because I thought that was him in the trailer, even yeah. though they were trying to say at first it wasn't him. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. All right. So they had the red carpet premiere and mm-hmm. yeah, looked pretty cool. Okay. So, oh, so let's talk about the what if episode. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was really 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 good i love the idea of uh, t'challa as star lord being like basically like space robin hood yeah like i loved that a lot and i cried only twice watching it i didn't cry the whole entire time like i thought i would yeah <laughs> i cried the first time i heard chadwick's voice and then i cried again when he is sorry i'm gonna spoil the show the episode so if you haven't seen the episode right now stop listening okay pause it here go back watch the show and then come back okay so the part that really just made me tear up is when he finds the ship that was um actually like his dad's ship and it's his dad saying to Tala, my son if you're out here listening uh, um i know you're up amongst the stars and when he said that line it it really got me yeah. and i like i cried because you know that's where i hope chadwick is you know if there is a place after death or whatever you know i hope that's where he is amongst the stars and it just really got me so that line made me really like tear up and and cry but that being said i think that his star lord is a superior star lord (laughs) yeah (laughs) he was so good it was so fun and just like he was charming and he's everything that i think star lord is supposed to be charming and like and interesting, and cool, and funny, but, like, not to the point where you're like, okay, it's kind of old hat thing, you know? Like, it was refreshing. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. And then I loved the whole, like, Thanos is good now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all hanging out <laughs> in the bar. I, yeah, it was so good. And I, and I loved the blonde hair design on Nebula. Oh, that yeah. was, like, such a cool look that I'm like, I kind of want to see, like, Karen Gillan rock that, like, look. Sure. So, you know, just saying. Yeah. For Guardians 3, James Gunn. I thought it was beautifully done. And yeah, some of the design redos were really well executed. And yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it was, it was it was touching in all those ways. But I also wanted to say that, like, it was nice that he inhabited the part of Star-Lord's character, which is a little, like, more goofy and loose and, like, witty and, you know, funny. It was basically, like, mm-hmm. you know, because, like, he doesn't get, like, a ton of chances to be, like, the funny guy is Black Panther, right? He gets he's like has to be the king. He doesn't get a lot of the comedy lines. <laughs> but, yeah. So it was nice to see that dimension of him being kind of the like snarky like. And that's I think he had talked to Kevin, which Kevin re- released in an interview, said that Chadwick had asked me after we had like 
did his recording sessions if like we could bring that kind of humor and like voice more into T'Challa so Mm. he has a little bit of that like you know humor and fun Mm. to him he's not just all like you know serious king thing and that's kind of like the what he wanted to bring into for Black Panther 2 but now it's you know never gonna happen wow but it's just it's really sad because it it really that it's sad but it was so like fun like to see like you said chadwick do something that was more fun and lighthearted and witty and like it it was just a lot of fun and i just and i i didn't expect to still enjoy the like um relationship between uh hondu and that's his name right hondu yondu the arrow guy yeah Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Where did I get Hondu from? <laughs> That's the guy in Star Wars. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Go, go on. I don't know. But I didn't expect to really still like that, like, you know, relationship that, like, they built. It still felt so, like, authentic and good. And yeah. I was just, I loved everything about it. And I'm shipping T'Challa and Nebula. I'm sorry, yeah. guys. It's, it's, it's inedible. It was so great. I just really liked it. And yeah. I'm really curious. I don't know what the next episode is going to be about. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the next what if episode? Okay, I'm not sure, but there. I thought it had something to do with an alternate version of how they fight Thanos and involving Ant Man. I'm. I thought that was a joke. Oh, was that a joke? Okay, well then I just I fell for it. Everyone, everyone had a joke where like you know the way to beat Thanos is if Ant Man shrunk down to the size, the little size, and he somehow got in Thanos's. It's like sorry guys, but. Yeah. And which they did in Justice League one time. Okay, but yeah, so I fell for that joke. I don't know what the next episode is either. But what I wanted to say was, regardless of what the next what if episode is, uh, yeah. So that so that Star Lord episode had a lot of layers, and I also wanted to mention that Jason Johnson did. Jason Johnson did a piece on the Grio. I don't know if you read that site at all about you know T'Challa's Star Lord in this alternate version versus Star Lord in the mcu who is Mm -hmm. basically kind of a klutzy white guy let's just say there's you know starler became a big deal because of the guardians of the galaxy we get it Uh uh-huh he wasn't popular character before but he but and part of his thing is he is like klutzy and reckless and a lot of things that basically white hero protagonists can get away with most notably, mm-hmm. let's say that part of Infinity War when, you know, he couldn't shut his trap for two minutes and, you know, let when they basically had Thanos on the ropes and yeah, he just blew I, the whole thing out. I He blew it, but I think also in hindsight, because I was mad in the moment, it had to happen that way, unfortunately. Well, of course it had to happen because then we wouldn't have Endgame, but like, yeah, it's not like, I yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, no, but it is frustrating. I was like, how, why, just he couldn't like... Uh, but no, I mean, I feel like, and then I have to think about it, if I was in that like situation, you know, would I also like react emotionally and not think and like, you know, mess it up? And I probably would. Mm. I'm not going to like, you know, I don't know if I would be able to like, also keep my head straight. I get that. I, I it, it is a tough situation, but it is frustrating to like, <laughs> I think be on the outside washing it and you're like, no, how could you? <laughs> yeah. But I did like. Um, cause I know they were like, oh, Kurt, they put Kurt Russell in like, you know, like the cast of who was going to be in it. And then we're getting to the end and I'm like, he's not in this damn episode. Why mm-hmm. they lie to me? Mm-hmm. And then he shows up at the end at the Dairy Queen and he meets Peter Quill. And he's like, hey, Peter. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Good. E- excellent. What if episodes are that? All right. So let's talk for a second about our anticipation for the Spider-Man trailer. And then yeah. we can talk about... You know, at you know, as of this moment on Sunday. Yes, today is the twenty second of August. Apparently, tomorrow, August twenty third, there's supposed to be something that Sony is doing, and they might release the trailer for Spider Man: uh, No Way Home. And I hope it's true. So I, we, me and Dom were both like, "Do we still record today?" Because Keith was already like, oh, "I can't make it today." So we're like, "Well, if the Spider Man trailer drops, do we even like record today? Like, like should we?" Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, that's supposed to happen, and I'm really excited. And there's already, like, speculation of, like, apparently the trailer runtime is 2 minutes and 55 seconds. There were some pretty detailed, like, hints, like... Yeah, <laughs> they're, like, they're, like, William Dafoe's in the trailer, is Green yeah. Goblin. Yeah. 
crazy. So we'll see. Um, look, if they just show one of the other Spider Men in the trailer, I'm gonna scream. Yeah, I already know that. There'll be a lot that. of screaming. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just for context, again, this is at the anticipation moment before we know exactly what's happening. And basically, for context, we've been wondering about this spider-man no way home trailer for well, basically two years <laughs> like, it's it's yeah, trending it's, every it's, day whether it's going to come out or not ordinarily in an ordinary world where there was a pandemic there would have been a teaser at least already but it's not an ordinary world i i i want to say that it's the pandemic but i feel like i really do feel like they were trying to not one i think they don't want to put it out too soon and people forget about you know the two movies that are coming out before right, it for sure that and then i feel like i feel like how do you cut a trailer with so many good things that are supposed to be in this movie like all all the rumors are true like how do you put together a decent trailer that like doesn't give you know too much away especially mm-hmm. for people who don't like follow all the announcements like we do like how do you like you know what I mean? How do you not give yeah. away the movie? Because I would have, like, you know, if they saved so much for the movie, yeah. like, that would, and you don't see anything in the trailer, like, I understand why they would do that. So I just feel like, yeah, it's trying to cut a decent trailer where you get the story, but you don't, like, you know, lose, you don't have too many of, like, yeah. the good stuff showing up. But I feel like they have to at least show one of the spider man I, I right, right. right. I mean, like, I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true. And I think it, I mean, I think it's safe to say that because this is easily the most ambitious Spider-Man movie they've done mm-hmm. yet. And ambitious yes. sounding. And all the various things that have been teased about what might have been it. And some of them pretty much confirmed. I mean, if you took all the things that have been teased about what might be in this movie, it sounds like, mm-hmm. like a you know five-hour long movie <laughs> with you know yeah. like half the Spider-Verse universe of characters in it. So we do know for sure that Doctor Strange is in the movie. Yeah. That is a for sure confirmed. Yes, he's gonna be in the movie, and then all the rumors are is uh, Charlie Cox who played Daredevil. Yeah, is he gonna be, be in great? It? You know, is Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield is gonna be in it? Is William like? Oh, and then I I think Jamie Fox and Alfred Molina were all confirmed. Yeah, Those two were I, confirmed. I think so. Yeah, they never confirmed William William Defoe, but like apparently he's in the trailer. Yeah, I mean my <laughs> excitement about all this, to be honest, is. A sinister sticks with all those villains assembling because that's part of my spider-man mm-hmm. jam i like it when he goes up against like six dudes and he's hopelessly outmatched and because me that's like the <laughs> spirit of spider-man so i i'm i'm totally in it for like to have you know dr octopus electro mysterio some goblin all in the same place and like you know let's go but you know we'll see again CinemaCon in las vegas is happening this week and so there's a very strong chance that uh, their Marvel's going to have to show, sorry, Sony slash Marvel is going to have to show mm-hmm. some Spider-Man something to, you know, yeah. <laughs> to let people know, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually making this movie. We're not just like teasing people on the internet with it. I know Kev, when they asked Kevin about it in a recent interview, he pretty much said what I was saying. Like, you know, we have two other movies that are coming out first. Like, let's focus on those two. Yeah, for sure. He's like, haven't I given you enough? Like, right. Right. <laughs> and I was just like, but really, Kevin is not the one to ask about the Spider Man stuff because at the end of the day, that's a part of what Sony. That's right. Yeah. Wants to do so. The person you all should be bothering, if you're gonna bother someone, is Amy Pascal. Right. She's the one who's in charge of Spider Man Sony stuff. So it's like, you guys should be bothering her, not Kevin. Yeah. Because Kevin has to agree to what she wants in terms of releasing it when it is a Spider Man movie. If it was you know, uh, like an Avengers movie and Peter ha- Peter Parker happened to be in the movie, then he would have a little bit more like, no, this is when this is happening. But, you right. know, he can't because Amy's the one in charge. So you guys bother Amy Pascal. Yeah. Ask her. <laughs> yeah. Poi, poi well taken. And I, I just want to reiterate that, like, I mean... One of the reasons it's so fascinating is because the Spider-Man movie really should be the hugest movie of the last couple of years in the universe of like big event movies. I mean, Mm -hmm. let's let's not forget that. It's not like we're just anticipating it because we're bored and on Twitter. It's because it legitimately like it should be the biggest blockbuster of the year, whether or not there was a pandemic. But there was a pandemic and, you know, it's been two years. It's since Endgame and the ninth Star Wars movie, and there 
hasn't been a nerd movie event as big until this one that is supposedly scheduled. I mean, would you do you, mm-hmm. would you agree with that? I mean, is that I would agree because again, as much as like me and you have love for a Shang Chi, like not everyone else is as familiar with him. So like you know that might not hit in the same way. And you know also that we talked about like I don't know like I don't know how many people like outside of like. <laughs> And Marvel Twitter of in like people in the Asian community are going to go see this movie because of like knowing how important it is to you guys as a community. Like, you know, I don't know because I'm not a part of like the Asian community. So I know with Black Panther, it was a different like we knew for most black people knew that mm-hmm. Black Panther was going to do well because we knew everybody was going to go see it regardless yeah. if they were up to date with the movie. So I feel like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spider-man is that movie that like everyone is gonna be like ah because everyone knows spider-man like yeah. everyone knows that spider-man is basically you know marvel's uh, right. batman it's like everyone wants batman everyone wants spider-man it's like, the first everyone movie i think since the pandemic started i mean wasn't it like i mean the batman it, is what did mm-hmm. it get delayed one or two years i don't know but it's i think it was supposed to be out by now wasn't it <laughs> yeah it was but so that would have been an everyone movie, but clearly they they've pushed that far back. So mm-hmm. as far as the everyone just like big big broad appeal movie, I think Spider Man is the first one we've had since since this pandemic started. Yeah. So a lot of things in motion. Yeah, that's the one I'm more worried about, like going to see in theaters versus like the other movies. I feel like yes, people will show up and there may be crowding at these other movies, but I just mm-hmm. feel like Spider Man is the one that's like. You know, especially if they exactly. really do see, you know, Toby and Andrew. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, potentially this is going to be the one that like people crowd theaters for and they all want to mm-hmm. be part of that very special opening reaction kind of experience. And so we'll just see because it's, you know, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, so I just wanted to talk about that because let's we'll see what happens. So I think, I mean, that's good for now as far as you know this chunk anything else you want to mention while we're on i finished season one of ted lasso i want to call him laszlo even though i know it's not lasso (laughs) i finished the first season i loved it it was so good he's just i don't know it's such like a sweet like heartfelt show i don't know if you've watched it yet at all but i am not familiar my sister likes it a lot it i and it's i played like soccer growing up that and Oh, okay. Like I, I know people follow me on Twitter. No, I'm like, I don't like sports, but soccer was one of the sports I enjoyed. I just have hmm. asthma, so I never played it as long term as I wanted to because I was dying. <laughs> mm. oh, okay. <laughs> but huh. no, so it was like I knew that, and I like Jason Sudeikis. So I'm like, okay, this show is gonna be a fun watch. But like, the show really is like so adorable, and like it's. I wouldn't say it's wholesome because there's like all, all like characters having like sex and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily family friendly. I mean, it's not explicit, but like, I don't know. It's a Wait, very... are you kids have wholesome sex and family friendly shows? I guess here. I don't know. It depends. I don't know what people's it, it, opinions are on that. Pretty, but yeah. <laughs> but it's like a really cute. Like I don't know. He does his best to like, you know, be uplifting and like positive and not like from a weird like you know, fake, you know, force, let me force positivity on people just Mm. because, like, I don't know, he, like, really just tries his best to be a good dude because, like, he talks about how he was, like, there's one episode later on, I don't know if it's a spoiler, but he talks about how he used to be bullied as a kid and people were always mean to him, so he tries to be nice and, like, you know, generally be there for people and be a good person, so Ted is, like, such a great guy and I don't know. Like, the whole premise of the show is he's an American football coach who only coached at, like, college level or whatever, and he gets hired by this woman named Rebecca to come coach a football team, soccer, in England um, because she wants to make her ex-husband miserable, and he loved that soccer team so much, so she tries to hire the worst man for the job. (laughs) So that's the whole, like, premise of the show, but, like... Every time she tries to basically, like, sabotage things and stuff, like, he doesn't react the way, you know, he should or, like, things don't necessarily go the way, like, she wants them to because he's, like, Ted is so, like, positive and, like, sweet and very understanding and, like, he's like, oh, okay, I get that that have to happen or, like, you know, he doesn't get, like, 
he doesn't let things like he tries to not let things bother him too much and stuff and it's just a really cute show and my favorite character is Roy Kent who's like the older like player on the team and he's kind of like closer to like the you know oh, okay he's on his last mm-hmm. legs as a football player soccer football player sorry and yeah like it's really cute it's sweet everyone should watch it it, it will make your day it's so cute apple tv is one of those apps i don't have that's the one i'm still on the offensive <laughs> so i don't that's... know why i haven't crossed over to cross that last bridge so Across that's almost all that's the, other the app that my aunt actually pays for because most of the oh, apps okay. on our tv right. downstairs either my dad or i pay for them and so this is the one that my aunt actually pays for and so all right i me and her watch that show together so we just finished the season one last night i cried like you guys i'm so like uh hmm. you would think that me being a gemini that i would not be crying all the time but like i don't know that show just really got me in my feels so i watched that yesterday and That's i also good, watched dude. the what if episode so yeah i was a mess <laughs> emotional spectrum <laughs> yeah that was that was my yesterday <laughs> That's what we want, uh, engagement and to feel the feelings. Okay, well, cool. I guess, so Brittany, how how do people find you on the internet? So you can find me at Hi Brittany Monet on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot, where I'm tweeting about all different kinds of stuff. And we finally put out the first episode of The Lituation Room, which you can technically follow us at Naomi Podcast because that is going to be um, the twitter handle slash feed of uh when we do the naomi podcast which is you know for the show that ava duvernay is doing with the cw about the dc character naomi we were formerly known as the black lightning Hmm. podcast so you can still listen to the black lightning podcast um feed on there it's all still part of the same feed it's just rebranding you could say so that's all it is and um so lituation room is the podcast that is not family friendly so if, okay. when you see the lituation episodes, if you are trying to listen with your family, don't listen to that with your family. Okay. We warn you. And then NSFW. Yeah, pretty much. And then the Naomi podcast, when we actually do Naomi focused episodes, will be kid friendly. So okay. just wanted to let people know <laughs> if you're planning on listening. Good, yeah, and thanks for sorting out the path. You know, sometimes we get all these podcasts, sometimes we get lost in the path for how to find them. So that's mm-hmm. good to know. And like, I never say NSFW out loud. It's awkward. It shouldn't be said in <laughs> speech. It should only be typed. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I'm Dominic, Dama, D-O-M-M-A-H, on Instagram or Twitter. I also write for the Nerds of Color. And, and that's cool. That's fine. Because uh, we'll either make this the episode or we'll get back together on Wednesday and talk about or Tuesday Tuesday yes and hopefully talk about the Spider-Man thing that came out yes if it comes that's what I was like I was kind of on the fence of like should we I don't want to like record and like Spider-Man and then we release the episode and then like having to scramble yeah. to like so you know shift to breaking news yeah that's the only thing I hate about like sometimes we'll record and then like the next day a big trailer comes out and like oh now we gotta like wait a week to talk about it yeah <laughs> alright well yeah well, I hope we do get get to do this again on Tuesday. Yes, me too. And hopefully Keith will join us so we can all geek out about Spider-Man. Yeah, right on. Yeah. All right. Well, it's the N-O-C. In full color, you see me? The hard knock line. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, subject. This is the hard knock line. But not the chick of kind, more like the people.